Great. So um, at the Spatial Centre these days, we're thinking a lot about what is, what is spatial thinking and how to foster spatial thinking, especially in the college curriculum. So I thought it would be good to reflect on how I became a spatial thinker, and, uh, but also how I came to study spatial thinking, which is really my main topic of research, and a little bit about what is spatial thinking anyway. So I kind of went back to a couple of formative experiences, and my first memory of spatial thinking was when I learned about a graphs when I was about eight years old. And what we did was, at that stage, um, that time everybody smoked, so everybody had matchboxes all around the house, so every kid in our class had to bring in a matchbox, and we wrote the month of our birthday on the matchbox. And then we all went up to the top of the class and we arranged the matchboxes so that we, um, you know, stacked up all the January, February, etc., and basically created a map, so, or, or a graph. So this is my first, you know, you know, basically a matchbox represents me and a spatial arrangement of the representations of me and all my, my um, fellow students um, was how we learned about graphing. And I still use graphing every day. Every time I get a data set, I have to graph it a million ways before I feel I understand it. So that's the way in which I'm a spatial thinker. Um, next formative experience is when uh, we had career guidance in, uh, when I was about 16. And, um, and that was the first time I encountered things like this, spatial <laughs> ability tests and mechanical <laughs> ability tests. And, um, uh, and again, I use them all the time in my research now. And um, the results of this career guidance also came in the form of a graph. And it came, some, mine looked something like this, you know, it was pretty decent in verbal ability, really terrible in clerical speed and accuracy, pretty good in math, but I really excelled in the spatial mechanical stuff. So the career gap, uh, I just kind of said to me, hey Mary, you're good at math and you're good at spatial. You should be an architect. And I didn't take her advice. Instead, I, I, sort of, I started thinking, well, why, how could I be good at these things? I've never seen them before. What makes me good at these things? And indeed, that's really been the question that has defined my career, if you know me. <laughs> so, um, so what is spatial thinking then? Um, I think it's um, a couple of things. And my, my initial, it's thinking about space. Um, and so when you think about the, the consequences of folding and <coughs> objects and unfolding them and, and what the pattern of holes will be, you're thinking about space. You're also thinking about space when you navigate, of course. And I didn't, don't have an example of that, but that's also part of my research. But it's also using space to think. So there's nothing inherently spatial about the distribution of birthdays in a, in a class, but by making a spatial representation of those, we detected a pattern. And so this is another way in which uh, we think spatially, and, um, and that's just one example of what we, call, what we talk about these days as ha of having a spatial habit of mind. So um, questions I'm asking myself these days is, you know, are spatial thinkers born or are they made? Would I, would I be a spatial thinker if I hadn't had these formative experiences? And how do we foster a spatial of habit in mind in our students? And maybe the question I realize is really equally important is, how do we know when we have? How can we measure that? So that's it. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>